Hey everyone, Sawmill Charlie. Well, I'm down in my basement, and as I talked about in a previous video about pulling these honey supers off, and I'm sure that they're wet due to the high humidity outside here in Maryland, and they're not capped. There may be some of them are 50% capped, some of them are 80% capped. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make a homemade drying chamber for the honey. I'm going to use a dehumidification unit here. I'm going to use a box fan. And then I'm going to use some plastic sheeting. You can buy this at Home Depot. And last of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this 8-foot table here. And underneath, I'm going to set my supers up on edge. I'm going to drape the plastic over top of the table all the way to the floor. I'm going to put boards down to hold the plastic to the floor. I'm going to take the fan here and put it at one end of the table and blow air through the supers to the other end where the dehumidification unit will be sitting and running and sucking the moisture out of the air. So I'm hoping in uh, three to four days, depending on how much moisture is in the supers, that it will dry this honey down to, I'm hoping, or let's say 16.5% moisture content. Now you don't want to go below 16, honey will get to the point where it will not come out of the supers. It'll be too thick. So 16 and a half would be real good if we can get this done. So I will go ahead, set this unit up, and then we'll be back. All right, everyone, here we have my do-it-yourself drying room for honey. As you see, the plastic is draped over top of the table. There's six supers in there, evenly spaced, so air can get all around them. Off to your left, there's a little black object here next to the yellow super. That is the fan. It's a 20-inch uh, box fan. All the way to your right, the white object there next to the bundle of plastic is the dehumidification unit. As you can see, there's boards along the side, on the floor, that sit on top of the plastic kind of uh, making a seal so the air can't really escape inside that little uh, confined area. Boards on the other side are just the same. So what I will do is turn on the fan to blow the air around inside the confined area and then the dehumidifier will suck the moisture out of the air and then hopefully reduce the moisture in the honey. All right, uh, before I did put the supers underneath the table, I did get my fractometer out and I did take a sample of the honey, uh, actually one of the combs that, that was not capped and it was reading right at 18% moisture content. So I would say about two to three days, uh, hopefully the moisture in these supers will be down around 16.5% and then it will be safe for me to extract this honey out and then go out and get the remaining eight supers that are on the hives and go through the same process of this. So if you're wanting to do this for yourself or you have to do this occasionally like I do, this is probably the second time in about four or five years I've had to do this due to weather conditions, especially with high humidity. It's very hard to get uh, the honey dry and uh, for this year a uh, reason I'm not really sure the bees just really didn't cap the honey off uh, but all you need is some sheeting plastic you can buy that at Home Depot if you've got a box fan in your house use that uh, you can use a dehumidification unit a little portable job and all it is is just a little eight foot table now if you don't have a table you could take a couple sawhorses Put some uh, eight foot or I'll say 10 foot two befores on top of maybe three of them. That way you have a support there for your plastic sheeting. 
and it would do the same thing. So it's very cheap, very easy to do, and except for maybe having a dehumidifier and, of course, the box fan. So I'm going to let this run 24 hours a day for the next two to three days. I will be checking it with the fractometer here uh, periodically through those next couple days to make sure it doesn't get too dry. Hey everyone, Sawmill Charlie. Well, I'm down here in the basement here next to my honey drying unit that I made up and it's been four days and I check the honey periodically, probably every two days, at least uh, a couple supers and a frame in each super uh, throughout that four day period. Today on the fourth day, uh, I checked every super, at least one to two frames per super, and my moisture content now is at 16 and a half to 17 and a half moisture content, which is great. I don't have any concerns of the honey fermentating in a five gallon bucket after I extract it. And uh, so I will probably go out next week or actually in a couple days and pull the remaining eight supers off of the hives and put them through the same process to dry them down so I can extract the remainder of my honey for this year. Uh, there has been a concern by a couple uh, subscribers or maybe probably a misunderstanding of what I was trying to put across as far as information on the last video when I was taking these supers off and that is I took the supers off being uncapped anywhere from 50% to 80% uncapped because here in Maryland our temperatures have been in the 90s or a little higher. Our moisture content has been between 80 and 90% uh, humidity uh, which is very hard for the bees to dry. Uh, we are in a dearth yeah, this is uh, July and it's going to go through all the way through the end of August and with there are no nectar sources coming in the bees will not be able to make really any wax to do any capping with so that is why I went ahead and took them off plus I did not want the bees to consume my honey that I wanted to take off as a crop and they would surely do that if I left it on till the end of August so that's why I took the supers off, even though they were uncapped. And because of the high humidity, that's why I've had to use this honey dryer that I've uh, built here. I have used this same unit probably about three to four years ago because of the same conditions at the time. Just high humidity, and that's just a killer uh, for uh, trying to get the honey to dry by the bees naturally. Um, on the fractometer I use, I just want to let you know you can buy this on Amazon. Uh, just search for honey refractometer. Make sure it's a honey refractometer. Uh, the scale inside is a water scale off to the right. The center scale is the brick scale. And the scale off to the left when you're looking through, I believe it's a Celsius scale. And that is the unit that you want. Uh, my unit came with about maybe an ounce worth of calibration fluid. I've since run out of that. So I wanted to check the calibration of this unit, make sure it was accurate. And I went ahead and got some virgin olive oil. You can buy it at your local grocery store. And I put some droplets on the uh, glass here, flipped over the cover, and the correct reading for that is 71.5 or 71 and a half on the brick scale and this thing was just dead on so I know my unit here is calibrated accurately so I just wanted to pass that information on if you need calibration fluid just get yourself some virgin olive oil and look at the brick scale and make sure it's reading 71.5 or 71 and a half so that's all I've got for you right now. I'll probably be extracting this honey here in the next day or two. Uh, and then also be gathering, of course, the uh, additional eight supers off of the um, hives out at the apiary. 
Until next time, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell, share my videos with your friends, and have fun with your bees.